we start uh, this small webinar about uh, payment bearing capacity evaluation. Uh, just a small presentation about myself. Uh, I'm Umberto Pinori and I'm senior payment engineer at Dynatest. Uh, I have more than uh, 15 years experience in payment survey and evaluation. I'm responsible for equipment and software application. Uh, R&D activities inside the company uh, regarding the payment application of our equipment and lead of consulting unit. So here you can find my uh, contacts. So uh, please feel free to contact me and ask any question about this webinar. Uh, some uh, uh, webinar info. Uh, the webinar will be recorded. Uh, the camera is always off for all the attenders. Uh, if you want, you can sign as anonymous to the webinar, so you don't need to provide your name if you want. Uh, attenders can switch on the subtitle uh, uh, themselves from option panel. And for any question, uh, uh, you need to use the chat space. So uh, at the end of the webinar, uh, there is a small session dedicated to the question and answer. So please uh, uh, write any question during this webinar and uh, uh, I will read uh, your request at the end of the webinar and uh, uh, I provide you the answer. And now to look about our uh, presentation today is uh, and there is an introduction about the building capacity concepts. Uh, what is a, a payment? Uh, what is a payment model? Uh, which are the equipment for the bearing capacity measurement? Uh, what is the payment evaluation? Our equipment and our software, so the, what, how much is powerful the Dynatest Elmod software and the session for the Q&A. What is payment bearing capacity? So it's important to define what we are going to measure and what and why we are going to measure. So the load bearing capacity indicates the capacity to support traffic loads. If the load bearing capacity declines, payment become unable to support a traffic load and deflect under the load. In the results, it could be cause damage to the surface and inside the payment. So as you can see, the first picture on the left is how we figure out any roads. So new, black, and perfectly smooth, but on the right side, you can see a, a damaged payment, in this case, full of wrapping. So in our idea is to have a everywhere and anytime new payment uh, very smooth, but due to the lack, very often lack of building capacity, at the end we have a damage road. So, uh, and since uh, the status of the new road is a very short time period, uh, we need to take care more time about the real condition of the road. So for this reason, it's important to uh, provide a correct payment evaluation in order to understand when the maintenance application is needed, which is the right moment and which is the right type of maintenance to apply at the payment. So which is the payment model? Uh, road and airport payment are a sequence of layer each of one characterized by a specific design in order to specify a specific target. So each layer of a payment usually is designed to a proper target. The subgrade is the, usually is the natural soil. The sub-base sub layer, or sometimes it's called foundation layer, used, usually is granular material and has a function of separation. And then we have a series of bonded layer. It could be ceiling stabilized, uh, uh, grain sides uh, uh, stabilized, uh, and uh, of course, top layers usually are asphalt bonded layers. So, and it's important because we need to identify in which layer is the lack of the payment. Because if we don't ident identify in which layer, you, we, can, we cannot apply the right maintenance. So the subgrid 
usually for the uh, in payment engineer perspective point of view, the subgrid is the uh, soil that is placed uh, around 40, 80 centimeters below the top of the pavement. So if you have a, a full embankment, the subgrid is not the bottom of the embankment, but the subgrid is always top of the embankment, is what there is just a half meter around below top of surface. And this is important because we are not going to investigate the geotechnical problems of an embankment, but we are going to investigate the film uh, engineering aspect of the road, that is the substructure. Uh, the subgrid is anyway is a fundamental part because all the pavement is placed over uh, the, uh, the subgrid. So the subgrid nature can determine the viscoelastic and plastic deformation under traffic load. So it's very important that during the, um, uh, the exercise, uh, during the uh, real life of the pavement, uh, you can measure the behavior performance behavior of the subgrid. Uh, and you can identify the properties of the single layer of the subgrid. The subgrid ca characteristics determines all payment structure above, and the subgrid strength depends from many points. Uh, most uh, usual one are grain size distribution, in particular the passing at 75 microns, uh, porosity and water content. Foundation, what uh, uh, the principal scope of the foundation layer is the separation between the asphalt bonded layer and the subgrid in order to distribute the stress induced by the load. So, uh, of course, weaker is the subgrid and more you need to put the distance between the asphalt concrete layers and the subgrid. So, the main purpose of the foundation layer is to introduce a space, a distance between top layers and the subgrid. And this is useful for the stress dis distribution inside the pavement. And then we have the uh, top layers that uh, in the most of the case, uh, especially for the road, are uh, asphalt concrete layers. The sequence of asphalt concrete layers is a fundamental part of the pavement and they must absorb and distribute the traffic load. The typical sequence of uh, uh, a motorway or a highway or main road is surface layer, binder layer and base layer. Of course, from an uh, uh, operative point of view, surface layer is the most important one because it's the cont where the load is applied and is the contact between tires and the pavement. So, uh, surface layer, uh, the surface course constituted of the top layer of pavement should be able to withstand high traffic and environmental induced stress without exhibiting unsatisfactory cracking or rutting. So, of course, you need a proper design. It is main mission to provide even profile for comfort of the user uh, and provide enough texture to ensure minimum and safe skid resistance. Uh, we had a webinar uh, two months ago about uh, uh, profiling, about uh, uh, functional characteristics of the payment. So you can find that webinar on our uh, Dynatest uh, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, depending on local district condition, the functional characteristics such as uh, skid resistance, noise reduction, durability are often required for wedding course. Of course, all these characteristics are not part of the bearing capacity uh, evaluation of a payment, but are a fundamental part for the design and uh, evaluation of a road. So, Payment modeling. So this is very important because from the concept of the payment model, we can understand what we are going to um, measure using different type of equipment and which type of results we can get as output of the operation. 
So most of the payment scheme are today represented using a model based on linear elastic multilayer representation. Uh, this method represents an empirical approach where each layer is characterized by the thickness. So we need to know the thickness. In this case, you see that this Z is the depth from the top layer. Mainly for our calculation, we take in consideration the thickness of each layer, the Poisson ratio, and of course the elastic moduli. If you are in a design phase, you can set, for example, the elastic moduli of each material because you know that value from uh, lab test or from previous experience or from technical lecture. But the main scope of our activity uh, is to evaluate uh, the elastic moduli of existing payment. And we'll see during this training course how it's possible to make an estimation of the elastic moduli of existing payment, especially where you don't have any kind of information regarding the design phase. Payment modeling. Uh, the payment model allows a mechanistic approach for the payment evaluation, and it's very useful during the design phase. The benefits can be summarized because we can calculate stress and strain induced by the load in the payment. Uh, we can have a characterization of the material properties, and we can take in consideration the material performance. In order to have a forecast of the material behavior by the time, so we can have a, a forecast of the residual life that uh, for our calculation is the most important point. So we want to know when the payment uh, will show defects or will be in not, not operative condition. And uh, the, of course, uh, the, mechanis the mechanistic approach uh, is one of the most advanced way to take in consideration uh, uh, the payment performance. But by the time uh, empirical methods have been developed and are still in, in, still in place and very useful, but they can provide information just uh, uh, as minimal part of payment evaluation. So these empirical methods are based on test section, and experience of ob and observation. And of course, uh, they are limited in the amount of information they can provide for payment evaluation. Uh, so which are the measurements we can provide on payment? In the payment sector, most used bearing capacity are based on empirical method with a confidence base uh, on the long experience and number of tests conducted worldwide. So these tests, these tests are still valid and very good to um, evaluate the bearing capacity of some layer during construction phase, especially in particular, or in uh, the payment assuming as in, in one layer, but the uh, most of these uh, empirical methods are not useful to provide a, a mechanistic uh, evaluation. So, of course, we have CBR, the Californian Bearing Ratio. Is a, uh, this method is used worldwide to evaluate uh, uh, the strength of a soil and the bearing capacity of the soil. Uh, the positive point of this type of test, of course, is that it's fast because uh, in, in a reasonable amount of time you can provide, you can prepare a lot of uh, specimen uh, and samples in the uh, lab and the test uh, time is just a few seconds. Uh, it's easy to conduct in any condition, so in any, in any part of the world, there, there is this type of machine uh, and the long tradition in result evaluation. So based on the CBR, we can estimate if the subgrade condition, for example, is good or not. 
if we are in a good in good condition or, or not. What is not good using this method is, of course, is an empirical method, and uh, so there is no stress and strain uh, consideration. Uh, there is no evaluation of, of the performance of the material. Uh, the test limit, uh, the test can be provided only on natural soil and granular material. So this method is not valid for uh, bonded layer or asphalt concrete layers. And of course, this material not reflect the, the, the real material performance condition because of the compaction degree you reach uh, in the lab maybe cannot be satisfied in the uh, in the site so you are going to measure a performance in the lab and you are of course we know that the material is more or less in the same condition on site but of course we are we cannot be we are not measuring exactly the condition on site Another type uh, of test using for the uh, bearing capacity of the uh, subgrade and foundation mainly, and sometimes also on uh, bond, uh, cement bonded layers, is the uh, PLT, so the plate loading test. Uh, again, uh, this is uh, uh, this type of measurements is fast. It, you can test uh, one point in uh, an half an hour. Uh, you can measure the real material condition on site, so you can measure the real performance of the uh, of the layer or the pavement uh, constructed. Uh, and again, here th this type of uh, uh, investigation have been used for a long time, so we have a tradition uh, in the result evaluation. So we we know which are the uh, target uh, for this type of test. What is not fully positive about uh, this test is that, uh, again, the method is imp empirical, so uh, we cannot measure, of course, we measure the settlement of the payment, but uh, uh, again, the load is applied in a static way, and uh, uh, the settlement, uh, the, the, the type of test, so we wait for the settlement of the soil. But uh, this is a different uh, um, type of approach uh, versus uh, the real condition, because uh, uh, the road uh, received dynamic load, and the load is applied in a very short time. In this case, the, the load is applied for a very long time, so the settlement measure it are different from the deflection of the payment because the loading conditions are different. Again, the test limit uh, is limited to the soil and granular material, uh, not reflect the real material performance condition, mainly due to the uh, loading application type. And for application on existing payments, you need to uh, parcel demolition activity. Of course, you need to uh, create a pit and put uh, the, uh, P, uh, the, uh, the plate uh, inside the pit and provide the test. Of course, on an existing road, maybe you can provide one point or two points over a kilometer, but you cannot provide a lot of tests. Otherwise, we are going to destroy all the road. And of course, especially when you are on site, on construction site, uh, anyway, you re require uh, support of heavy vehicle as contrast. So this limits uh, uh, the possibility uh, for the um, test execution. So by the time, uh, different methods uh, have been developed for the full payment building capacity evaluation that try to replicate the real in situ loading condition with non destructive tests. Because, of course, the two tests that we have seen uh, before, uh, they can provide very useful information, but they are limited to a certain amount of, uh, um, of layers. But uh, Usually, that type of tests are not inside payment evaluation sector, 
uh, we want to investigate the payment uh, and see which is the real uh, behavior under loading condition. So uh, different type of equipment have been developed by the time. So now we are going to see uh, which are the most used one. The first one is the Benken Benkerman beam. Uh, the Benken beam is the uh, is more or less a, a simulation of the PLT, but provide on a full constructed um, uh, road. So we have a uh, we have a, this beam and we have a truck. So there is a, a, an inclinometer here that measures the deflection. Then the truck move away from the point. So we measure the uh, the deflection after. The, uh, the uh, track movement. The difference of the deflection, of course, provide a residual uh, uh, deformation of the soil. The positive points of this uh, type of investigation simulate the real traffic load condition because the load is provided by a real track. Uh, the method measures the real payment deflection because, of course, uh, we have uh, a deflection under the load and uh, when the load is far from the uh, beam. Of course, the, uh, there is a payment static elastic moduli calculation, so we, uh, we, can, we can have an estimation of the uh, moduli of the entire payment, of the entire payment. And the condition uh, is more or less static because uh, the truck move away very, very far and we measure the starting point when the truck is over the beam and we measure the final point when the truck stops far from the beam. Uh, of course, during the time uh, correlation with uh, the deformation model, the CBR and the falling weight uh, elastic modulus have been developed. Uh, but now we see most of the uh, not positive point of using this method uh, uh, that, of course, uh, at the end uh, create uh, a situation why the, this method is not uh, anymore used. The method is very slow. Uh, is a is a very sensitive test. There is a vibration engine here that try to stabilize the uh, the uh, deflection recorded. You need to close uh, the lane on the road for a long period because the test is not fast. You have more a lot of operators on the road, and of course, uh, if you have one lane open and one lane closed, this can uh, uh, create safety issue. And again, this requires the support of an AV vehicle for the load application. So uh, we need the assistance of some, someone over the operator. Here is a small video just to show how the uh, test is provided. So you see that th there is a beam uh, that touch the pavement just in the middle of the uh, truck wheels. Uh, and there is a, a, a system that measures the um, displacement. So they measure the deflection under the wheel. Now the truck move away and you see that the deflection uh, is, uh, uh, is reducing. The difference of the starting and the final deflection provide the um, residual deflection that is assumed for the calculation of the static moduli of the payment. Uh, an evolution of the Benken uh, of the Benken beam is the deflectograph Lacroix was developed in France. Uh, again, here we have a, a, a beam that is placed over the uh, surface and the load is provided by the truck wheel that is moving uh, verse, uh, in this, uh, going closer and closer to the beam. So, and the uh, beam can record the, uh, the deflection during the time the, the wheel move uh, closer to the beam. This method has, uh, has, uh, has been used a lot in Europe in the past. Uh, someone uh, is still using. There is positive points because simulate the real traffic load condition. Uh, they measure the real payment deflection. 
the deflection are measured at different distance from the load application point. Of course, the, the load is dynamic because it is uh, a sort of dynamic. It's not too fast, but it's dynamic. And uh, from, the, from the safety uh, point of view, of course, there is no operators on the road. Not positive points, of course, the, uh, the car is moving very slow, around five kilometers per hour, and this is not reflect uh, the real road condition. Is the known technology not uh, anymore updated? And again, the system is uh, installed uh, on a truck, so it, they require support of the EV vehicle, and maybe there is a special drive license uh, for the uh, driver is needed. We can see here a video where you can see that uh, uh, the beam is moving, now it's placing uh, on the pavement, and in this some seconds that the wheels arrive uh, right uh, in the middle of the beam, uh, it's recorded the deflection automatically. So is a continuous measurement. Uh, is a, is a, the measurement is made in continuous, uh, it's automatically recorded, there is no op uh, operators that needs uh, manual uh, adjustment, but of course the speed is very slow. And the last one uh, is the falling weight deflectometer. It was developed uh, since the 80s. Uh, and now is the most used one equipment uh, to uh, evaluate uh, the uh, payment billing capacity, which is the positive points of this type of equipment. Uh, there is a high number of load repetition, so uh, there is different type of load level we can set to, to simulate different uh, uh, pressure stress. It's easy to run in any payment type, uh, there are multiple geophones uh, uh, that record the deflection at different distance from the load application points. We have no operator on the road around the equipment because the, it's, uh, it's uh, controlled by computer inside the vehicle. Uh, the back calculation provided based on the uh, deflection allows to calculate the single layer elastic moduli, and this is very important to get the information uh, to reproduce the payment model that we've seen before. So we don't, we don't uh, get information for an overall evaluation of the payment, but we can evaluate each single layer. Uh, we can take into account the non-linearity during the elaboration process that uh, in, in some, uh, especially in some subgrade condition, it's very important. And all this information uh, generated allow to uh, estimate the residual life uh, and identify in the payment which is the um, critical layer. Uh, the po negative points is that the, uh, we cannot uh, change the frequency, so the load frequency simulate a vehicle that move around at 60 km only. And uh, no, for the moment, uh, we don't have other uh, uh, frequency. Uh, from an po operative point of view, here we can see a video. So how the machine is working. Uh, the load, uh, the, the beam is placed uh, over the saw, over the surface. So the loading plate uh, is, uh, is put over the road. The geophones touch the ground and the uh, mechanical part of the machine raise the weight and release so the, uh, the mass drop down uh, and uh, when there is the impact, the geophones record the deflection. Uh, as you can see here, the, the number of drop uh, the machine can apply uh, can define from the uh, operator, but the test procedure usually taking consideration one minute per station. For this reason, it's very fast. And when you are on the road, in a, in a short time, you can provide a big number of test points. 
there are different kind of falling weights on the market. Uh, we have the falling weight deflectometer called FWD, that is the traditional one. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the weights are raised by uh, hydraulic pressure. Uh, by the time uh, Dynet has developed the fast falling weight, uh, now the, 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 the masses are raised uh, uh, with electronic spindle, so the, uh, there is no uh, any more hydraulic parts, and the maintenance uh, uh, cost, of course, is reduced, and time of test uh, uh, has been reduced a lot. So this is very good uh, for the uh, test time. And of course, there is a version that the EV falling weight deflectometer, uh, the, the amount of mass is, is much more. Uh, it has been used to simulate uh, aircraft load, uh, but uh, uh, it is used also on traffic uh, uh, road condition. Uh, just a small video to show you how, which is the speed of the fast falling weight. We have two um, speed option. Uh, normal drop and very fast drop in this case uh, the uh, the each uh, test point is investigated in around 20 seconds but we can use also this machine to run uh, accelerated payment test we can apply up to 2000 drop per hour so uh, we develop a, a specific application to run a mobile uh, uh, accelerated payment test. So the falling weight, what is used for? Uh, the main purpose, of course, is structure, capacity, and remaining life estimates. But uh, very important for the rigid payment, uh, we can measure the load transfer efficiency between the uh, payment joints and void detection uh, again in the rigid payments. For what concern uh, the uh, main network roads, so we can uh, provide investigation for uh, pain management system at network level or investigation at project level. Uh, support uh, information for design phase. We can run a quality control and quality assurance test at the end of the construction phase or during construction phase. And of course, many uh, research applications like the mobile APT test that uh, we've seen in the video before. Which is the falling weight principle? Uh, of course, uh, we, uh, we place the equipment at test uh, uh, location. We lower the plate on, uh, on the payment, and you can see here that here, this is the, uh, the loading plate. And here we have a sequence of geophones that uh, each geophones measure the deflection on the payment. Uh, usually we place uh, up to nine geophones over the beam. Then we raise the weight. We fold uh, the loading plate. And of course, here there is a cells, uh, pressure cells that measure the load applied and we measure the deflection bolts. Of course, uh, we measure each single point and not the continuous bolts, but the bolts is recreated just to link at all the uh, uh, all the deflections uh, recorded by a single geophone. And after that, uh, we raise the load plate and we move to the next uh, test location. As we seen, uh, as we said before, um, from uh, ASTM standard, uh, three uh, drops uh, are mandatory for each test location. So using traditional falling weight, uh, usually for each test location, time spent is around uh, 40 seconds uh, to one minute. And with a fast falling weight, uh, we are around uh, 20, 30 seconds. Uh, this is the falling weight acquisition phase uh, software. So here you, we can see the panel. What is recorded by the falling weight uh, during uh, uh, during the test? So we run the test. Here you can see the change. So the uh, in this case simulation mode, uh, I need to input which is the change, but is automatically recorded. And here we have the stress applied. 
and you see here you have nine geophones and for each geophones uh, the uh, the deflection is recorded in this case for each uh, test point uh, we applied uh, six uh, uh, six uh, uh, drops with uh, three different stress levels so the first two is 600 kilopascal uh, the second uh, the third and the fourth are 850 kilopascal and the last two are um, uh, one uh, 1700 kilopascal and of course the deflection is increased according to the uh, stress level uh, the system is able to record gps uh, high temperature surface temperature and uh, there is also a raw camera can be installed to have a, a, a picture an overview of a surrounding area or the payment area uh, the, the following weight simulate uh, of course load transmitted to the payment surface by the wheel of any EV vehicle at speed of uh, around 60 km per hour so uh, we have the, the traffic uh, the stress induced by the traffic that generate uh, stress and strain and we want to able to provide uh, a back calculation in uh, in order to estimate the elastic moduli to calculate the stress in specific point uh, to measure the performance of the materials so uh, helmod software is the software uh, designed by uh, Dynatest for the back calculation. Helmod is the acronym of evaluation of layer moduli and overlay design. So, which is the process with the enter data are the load, deflection, and layer thicknesses. And we can provide a first step uh, back calculation of the elastic moduli. Uh, if we introduce uh, temperature seasonal parameters, uh, we can calculate the seasonal e moduli because, of course, the asphalt concrete uh, uh, materials are temperature dependent. So, if you want to have a more representative elaboration, you need to set different uh, temperature uh, for season or for months to replicate a real behavior of the material. Then we get the design models for each layer and season. In this point, uh, if we have the design load, we can calculate stress and strain induced by the load in the pavement for any layer or interface. If we have traffic and deterioration models, we can calculate the residual life. And based on the residual life, if we set a design period and design material, we can calculate the required overlay in order to satisfy the criteria set. So uh, the Helmut back calculation, the first step is the structure definition. So we need to define uh, the uh, thickness for each layer. Uh, we can get information from uh, JRadar or from Cori. In this case, if it's from GPR and you see the variation point by point. It's very, uh, the use of GPR is uh, highly recommended. For, uh, in, to improve the quality of the back calculation results. Uh, and here there is a simulation of how is uh, um, how the, uh, the back calculation is run. Here you have the seed value. You see that the green line now is not over the red light, uh, the red line. So now we are going to correct the seed value in order to replicate, to get the same deflection. Uh, now we activate uh, the nonlinearity for the subgrade. We want to minimize the percentage error. So in this case, this is, and now it's running the back calculation. So the software try to adjust the elastic moduli in order to replicate the same basine and comparing with the measured one. So here you can see in this case for this station, this was the uh, measured deflection for each geophones. And here you have the deflection calculated from a modeling of payment based on this thickness and this elastic moduli. So this is how the back calculation is, uh, is working. 
As a result, of course, uh, at the end of the process, uh, we have um, we have a, a a value of elastic modulus for each station for each layer, so AC foundation layer and subgrid. And for, especially for the AC, we have one result that we called at the uh, uh, test temperature. So sometimes the test the, the, the temperature of the test is very close to the reference temperature, but sometimes it's quite far. So we can adjust the AC moduli at the reference payment temperature. So if you see here, the, uh, the uh, E1 values change a lot from uh, the first one from uh, uh, 1666 uh, to 4410 because the test temperature was so far from the reference temperature. And this is very important. Uh, so the second step is the residual life calculation. If we have the uh, traffic information in terms of amount of um, amount of the number of vehicles for each class, and for each class we know exactly which is the uh, load applied for each single axle we can calculate uh, stress and strain uh, in the payment. And uh, based uh, on the failure criteria specified in, in the software, we are able to calculate the residual life. And if the residual life is below the design life, the software can calculate all, also the overlay, so the amount of asphalt concrete uh, to put on top of the existing payment in order to reach the minimum design life set in the parameter setup. So in this case, you can see that the first point has a residual life of 10 years. And since the software, uh, I, I set uh, the, the design life as 20 years, the software calculate that to reach 20 years residual life, uh, the payment need in this point 13 millimeter of overlay AC on top. For the second points, for example, we have uh, a residual life of three and the overlay needed uh, is uh, 150 millimeter. And the rest of the points uh, is in, are in good condition. So the life uh, is 40 years is over the design life. And for this reason, the overlay is zero. And all this process is automatically provided by the software. Uh, of course, all the data can be uh, plot on, uh, on Google Earth or Shapefile as you prefer, and you can combine uh, colored map uh, and pop out uh, that include uh, important information for your evaluation just to provide more usable uh, data for the users. And this is an airport case, and this is a, a, a road case. But it's very important, especially for the network level or uh, at project level, to identify immediately which are the critical areas. Uh, rigid payment. Mm, for rigid payment, we have uh, additional investigation that can be provided using the falling weight. Um, the first one, of course, is to evaluate uh, the load transfer efficiency. So which is the amount of load transfer from one uh, slab to the other one? Uh, to uh, provide this type of test, of course, the falling weight has to be placed uh, close to the joint and uh, uh, two geophones uh, uh, have to be placed uh, across the joints in order to, uh, to measure which is the deflection uh, in the loaded slab and in the unloaded slab. Uh, using an equation, there, uh, we calculate uh, the load transfer efficiency coefficient, and this is uh, automatically um, calculated by the software. So here you can see the column where the results are reported. And of course, you have an immediate evaluation of the performance of your slab at the joint. Uh, another parameter that can be calculated is the ratio between the support at the joint and support at the center. 
Uh, and this, this is sometimes is correlated also to the voids presence uh, below the, the slab at the joint or at the corner. And again, this is, uh, the voids are automatically calculated by the software if the test is provided at different stress level. And here again, uh, we have uh, uh, an important aspect for the uh, airport case. Uh, we have ACN PCN calculation. If the traffic spectrum is provided, the software can calculate uh, ACN PCN. So for each single point, the PCN is calculated and associated to the critical aircraft, cal uh, calculated according to the FAA standard. Uh, so in this case, you can see how you don't need to have to summarize all the payment uh, uh, in one point, but you can evaluate uh, the uh, the real performance in terms of a, a PCN of the payment point by point. And just to see if you have particular area where uh, can result as critical for your uh, maintenance. Uh, and of course, as reported here on top, uh, ACR PCR calculation is coming. So shortly, the NMOD software will be updated um, to ACR PCR calculation. Uh, summary: uh, What we seen uh, in, in this webinar, uh, we see a payment model. So how the uh, model of the payment is created what is important to take into account. So the elastic moduli of each single layer the, and the thickness. Uh, we, we've seen uh, what is the bearing capacity measurement. So which are type of tests that can provide an overall evaluation of the uh, payment condition and which are the equipment that can provide information to be used for the each single layer uh, evaluation fall and probably the best one of this type of equipment is the falling weight deflectometer and we've seen how it, how it's flexible and the big amount of information provided using this type of equipment uh, and which is the which are the results of the elaboration uh, from the back calculation so uh, the importance to evaluate the, per the real performance on site uh, of each single layer, because uh, uh, if you know the performance uh, uh, of each single layer, you can provide a mechanistic uh, approach evaluation that uh, provides you information about uh, uh, the critical layers and the residual life uh, of each single layer and of course of the overall uh, payment condition. So uh, please let me know if you have any question uh, about uh, this uh, uh, this presentation. Uh, Elmod software can be uh, so. The question if uh, is uh, if the uh, Elmod software can be downloaded from our website? Yes, uh, you can download Elmod from our web website. There is a form. Uh, uh, that has to be filled in and you receive uh, five days of free license uh, 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 that you can use for five days in order to evaluate uh, uh, the software. And for uh, university uh, and academy, of course, we can get an agreement uh, to have an extension for uh, students uh, and research purpose. Uh, another question is, uh, uh, could you please explain more about seasonal parameters uh, and what uh, are they? Uh, the seasonal parameters, uh, uh, very so we can take into account uh, the uh, temperature variation during the year. Uh, for example, I, I'm based in Italy here. Uh, in summertime, uh, the asphalt temperature uh, is around uh, 40 degrees. And in winter time, uh, the asphalt temperature is around uh, 15 degrees. Uh, since uh, the uh, asphalt uh, is very sensitive to the uh, temperature condition, of course, the elastic moduli in the summertime is uh, 
is reduced compared to the uh, winter time. I don't know, for example, in summertime, the asphalt concrete could moduli could be uh, 2,000 and in winter time, uh, 6,000. And when you apply the load in the model, the stress uh, induced by the load in the pavement is very different in summertime to the, compared to the winter time. So the damage generated in summer is much, much higher compared to the damage generated in winter time. So this uh, phenomena we call seasonal effect because each season is characterized by different asphalt temperature. Uh, and of course, uh, so you have seasonal effect. Uh, falling, falling weight uh, uh, be carried out continuously along payment for affected area and intervals. Uh, yes, can be carried out continuously. Uh, typical uh, interval tests are uh, for design purpose is between uh, 25 and 50 meter. Uh, for a project level, so if you have uh, like uh, 100 kilometer and you want to evaluate uh, uh, at project level, which are the critical area, typical interval tests are between 50 and 100 meter. If you have an entire network levels uh, uh, and you want to test the network, uh, usually the interval is between 200 and 500 meter. So these are the typical uh, uh, test interval. Uh, the, uh, another question, how evaluate lanes has speed more than 80 km per hour? Uh, yeah, the speed uh, can be higher in, in the real application, of course, uh, but uh, the, the falling weight has been developed uh, in that specific uh, uh, range of speed. So at the moment cannot be um, uh, changed. Anyway, the falling weight uh, has currently used uh, to investigate any kind of uh, payment, in particular the slow lane of the uh, of the highway. So you can use falling weight to test also highway where the speed is higher than 60 km per hour. Anyway, the, the data collected is still representative of the real condition of the road. Another question, uh, could you elaborate uh, capability on providing uh, uh, overlay design thickness for payment rehabilitation purpose. Uh, yes, you can do that. Uh, of course, uh, you one, in one thing uh, is you need to take into account that the overlay provided by the Almod uh, is rep is a representation of the uh, strength increasing needed for the payment. Uh, but uh, as you as engineer, ha you have to evaluate uh, if that solution is a good, also has an engineering solution. Uh, of course, uh, the, uh, since uh, Elmod calculate the overlay for each single point, of course, you can, you maybe, you need to assume an average because the, um, the overlay can uh, change point by point uh, of couple of centimeter. But in reality, you cannot apply overlay that change every 20 meters uh, of couple of centimeters. So uh, the software provides you an information of uh, uh, amount of strength reinforcement you need. But uh, you need to have some engineering evaluation uh, uh, about this information. Uh, another question is, I think the initial value for back calculation are so effective. Uh, is it possible to set a range of some value? Uh, yes, the seed value uh, are very important. Uh, there is a range, of course, there is in technical lecture, uh, you can find uh, some of this information. Uh, send me an email, I'll provide you some information regarding these points. Do you have other, other uh, questions? Uh, are there any restrictions on the in the thickness of AC using Femlet indica? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, th there is a there is a request. Uh, yeah, there is a limit. Uh, 
uh, about uh, the uh, back calculation uh, application is not only a limit of femlet mat when you have very reduced uh, AC layer thickness. Uh, in the theory, uh, the back calculation cannot uh, uh, provide useful uh, results if the uh, asphalt thickness uh, is, uh, is less than half of the loading plate radius. Uh, in our case, the uh, loading plate radius is uh, 15, uh, um, is uh, 150 uh, millimeter, so the half is around 7, 8 centimeter. So you cannot provide back calculation when the AC layer is below that uh, um, uh, value. Uh, we are running some research in order to um, uh, to close this gap, uh, and uh, so we are making some research that can be useful in this in, in in your case. But for the moment, there is a limit to not elaborate uh, payment where the AC layer. Uh, thickness is less than uh, eight centimeter. Uh, another question is uh, uh, okay regarding the uh, range sum value in Elmod. Not uh, there is no preset value for seed uh, values in Elmod. Uh, the falling weight amount constant, uh, uh, or we can adjust all roads evaluate by the same amount of falling weight. Uh, Abdallah, can you specify better? Uh, you, you mean that if it's constant, uh, the repetition, the results repetition, uh, if you test the road uh, with different amount of falling weight? Uh, yes, uh, our, our dietist falling weight uh, uh, is tested uh, to be uh, uh, to get uh, repeatable results. So the accuracy of the results uh, is guaranteed by the factory and also the results is repeatable. Uh, of course, if you test the same road uh, uh, here by year, you will find anyway some differences because uh, by the load repetition received by the, uh, by the road by the time. Uh, but I need uh, uh, more explanation about your request. Uh, Anka say hello, thank you for your presentation. Is it possible to do another webinar with uh, one live application in mode? Uh, yes, we will uh, try to put this uh, in our schedule. Uh, we have in place uh, some other uh, webinar about uh, uh, payment investigations, and uh, we try also to include uh, one about uh, back calculation uh, more specific. Uh, Another is agree. Thanks a lot. How we do uh, advanced uh, material like plastic road or rubberized uh, would be fatigue cracking equation. Yeah. Um, so if you have new material, uh, the type of test is still the same. So the uh, falling way is the uh, is a useful achievement. Of course, what is changed is the performance of the material. If you have rubberized asphalt. Uh, the elastic moduli of the rubberized asphalt is calculated by the back calculation. What is changed, of course, is the performance criteria of the rubberized asphalt. But in that case, that type of pe performance has to be provided by the lab test and not uh, from the uh, and not from the uh, from the uh, back calculation point of view. So if you use modified asphalt, uh, rubberized asphalt, uh, anyway, you can provide a falling weight test. Uh, I think uh, uh, questions are, uh, are finished uh, and also our time. So I would say thanks a lot to attend the webinar. Uh, you can see again uh, uh, the webinar on our uh, YouTube channel and see you soon to the next one. Bye.